Ladies. Long live Israel! God bless America! You guys out here to support Israel? Yep. The radical Muslim must be defeated unless we're going to all ruin the whole Western civilization. Because Israel is for Jews since the beginning of the Bible. That's number one. Number two, the Arabs have no right to be there. They are forcing us to kill their children to defend our children. Yes. How much do we have to bomb them before there's peace? No matter how long there has to be bombed. Yeah, how many schools do we have to blow up before there's peace? Well, we, we have advanced technology. Israel knows what schools Hamas is hiding in. Correct. And then they blow up the whole school. They, they very intelligent. Yes. They're, they had they're making bombs under the desks. Exactly. Those who are dying are suffering God's wrath, but, but... Don't I seem like a good Jew? You don't seem like a good Jew, but who am I? The Palestinian community is largely concentrated in Jerusalem, with smaller but significant communities in Gaza and the West Bank town of Jericho. The biggest Afro-Palestinian population resides in an enclave in Old Jerusalem, often referred to as the African Quarter. Estimates put the black community at between 350 and 450 people. Some Afro-Palestinian families are said to be able to trace their roots back as far as the 12th century, when their ancestors journeyed to Palestine from Sudan in Central Africa to visit Al-Aqsa Mosque, considered the third holiest site in Islam. Many of them guarded the mosque. Over the years, some African pilgrims settled permanently in Palestine, marrying local Palestinian women and having interracial families. A deep roots to the land whose ancestors date back for centuries. I met with Ali Jadah, tour guide, and the informal mayor of the African Palestinians in Old Jerusalem. I asked him about his life and relations between the Afro-Arabs and the Jews. Well, life for him, I think it's the hell. I'm one of those people who had experienced that. To be Palestinian, that's a big problem. But to be a black Palestinian, I'm quite convinced it would be the hell. Because uh, as a black Palestinian, I am uh, double oppressed. Double oppressed by the Israelis. In what way? In what way, I would explain it. First of all, they, first of all, they oppress me as a Palestinian. Uh, secondly, they oppress me because of the my color. Whenever I go around in the Israeli side, they call me Kushi. Kushi means nigger. Kushi means nigger. So, in Israel, the land of God, people who were the brothers of the Arabs, two brothers, you are called nigger as I am called nigger in America? Uh, let's say on the surface, uh, this is what they say, that this is the land of God and uh, we are cousins and there should be total equality. But once you come to the practice, when you come on ground, you will find that there is a lot of discrimination. And there is a real divorce, real divorce uh, between what they see and what they exercise. Blacks and whites who watch the show say, so why stay? Why stay when you are called nigger every day? Why stay when you are denied your rights? On the contrary, uh, they never, uh, the more they humiliate me, the more they oppress me. The more I stick to my land, because this is my land, I'm so rooted, we are deeply rooted as Africans, as Palestinian Africans in this land. And we know pretty well that our ancestors, I'm talking about thousands and thousands of years, we had been here in this country, but they were spread away, taken to Africa, from Africa to the United States. So uh, the more they exercise brutality, the more they exercise oppression against me, the more we are determined to stay because this is our homeland and we have a message, we have a holy message that this land should be the land of free peace, not the false peace that they are talking about right now. As I did the interview, I couldn't help but be amazed at the dismal setting. We were in old Jerusalem, in the city of Walls, sitting in an old jail called Prison's Gate. It had been built by the Mamluks, the Mamluks. Which are? They are Arabs, Muslims who came from Syria and occupied this area. We are talking about the period of uh, 1358, about six, seven hundred years old, this place. Then afterwards, this place was taken by the Turks, when the Turkish Empire occupied the whole area over here. So those places were transferred to jails. The origin of those places were built for pilgrims, people who come from Mecca, outsiders. So 
the Mamluks wanted some places where they can stay, where they can serve them, give them food, and they have worries, all these things. But once the Turks came over here, they transferred those places to prison. In the place you are sitting just now, they used to locate people who were sentenced to life, while in the other section, they used to locate people who were sentenced to death. Okay, I have a dream. I have a dream. It's not only me, all my people over here, that they will come and we'll have uh, better conditions so that we can move from this prison to Syria. But uh, I think uh, it's not only the name that gives it that definition, it's a prison. And the is. In the meantime, I can say the whole area, the whole place that we are living in is a prison, it's a jail. Not just this building. No, not just this building. I'm talking about, in general, about the total situation. You can live in a very bombarded villa, apartment, outside, but you are still in jail because you are deprived of your freedom, of your uh, freedom of expression. Try to imagine I'm living in a big villa, a millionaire. I have a Pontiac, 1997. Once I go in the street, they call me nigger. So what does it mean? It's nothing. It's nothing in front of the uh, my self dignity, my personal dignity, my human dignity. I think uh, I can talk that we are living in a picture. This picture, I wanted to show you that uh, we Afro Palestinians who are deeply rooted, but even before the Islam, we are here in this uh, country. But I say, okay, we don't want to go deeper, deeper, deeper in the history. But let's say beginning with the Islam, when the Islams came and opened this uh, country, you see that? Seventh century. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it was uh, this year, 662. And, and, and are, people, are black people here before the Islams? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yes, yes, for the Islam, yeah. So, so how, did, how did our people become, because you don't speak um, Arabic, right? Yes. How do people like, um, start to follow Islam? Well, they started to follow the Islam when the Islam began spreading from Saudi Arabia to other areas, to Africa, to this area. But don't forget in Saudi Arabia, if you go over there, you'll find a lot of our people, black people, who are originally, if you go back to their roots, you'll find they came from Africa. Yeah. So what was we, what, so what was we, um, like, you know, what was our belief before Islam? Because all that's, because I mean, recently, like, we didn't know where black, most black people are, you know, Christian, Muslim, Jew, Muslim. We have, we have Christians and we have Jews. Well, I mean, I mean, for the Islam. Okay. Well, so you think our people, were our people Christian and Jews? Or was yes, they were black, uh, black Jews and Christian Jews, blacks, uh, Christians, blacks. So, so that means... Our ancestors really came from being Jews, like black Jews, to become turned Christian and Muslim. And because I'm trying to get the deep roots of our ancestors. Ali, do you recognize Ibrahim as African? Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. Well, look. I don't want to be stick to the. To the belief of my father, mm -hmm. my uncles over here. Mm -hmm. My father and my uncles believed that all prophets were brothers, blacks. Yes. Mm. Your, your father, your father's father. If you father. talk about Jesus, they will say he's black. He was black. Mm -hmm. Muhammad was black. Moshe was black. All prophets were <laughs> black. <laughs> So oh, they were all black, the original yeah, 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 yes, 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 this is what, what they believe. believe. Yes. My father and uncles here, they believe. So the European is the new man in the family. Well, also, in some way, I'll say the Europeans are really stupid. <laughs> really stupid. <laughs> when they picture Jesus blonde with blue eyes, what? Yeah. Impossible. Yeah, well, <laughs> you born here in Bethlehem. Yeah. <laughs> you born in Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem and see the people over there. Yeah. People are black in Bethlehem. You see, the brown one, we regard him to be blonde. We look at him as blonde. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
how come Jesus blonde with blue eyes? As if he's Danish or Swedish. Yeah, or Michelangelo. Yeah. That's why Michelangelo yeah. painted. Yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> so yes, your father and your uncle they were all right. Yes, yes. <laughs> but the Quran even says Moses was of dark complexion. I suppose read in the Quran that Moses was of dark complexion. Yeah. Look, Moses read. He came from Egypt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Egypt. Unbelievable. Yeah. Our people over there. Unbelievable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, that was saying the world hearing from you know a real black Palestinian. That's mm. not the world needs to know. That we have black people in Palestine. People are really, not most of the people in England. They tell about Palestine and Israel. They are like they ain't going that country, but especially black youth. Mm -hmm. There's no black people. Really. A lot of black people. When I was telling them I was coming over this week, and they was like, "Why are you going there?" For? Like, see me, and my black people. They're like, for example, hey, brought to the south, very close to where our people are living. Thank you, Shalom. We're going to take it, take it too long, we're going to 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 take it but if somebody comes from Palestine and talk about it, the same with our people in the USA. Yeah. It's really very, very impressive to have someone from Palestine, for example, going over there and talking about the Afro-Palestinians. No, no, I should, I should do my best there to go to the USA. Concerning the second, third, fourth generation, if you ask us to identify ourselves, we say we are Afro-Palestinians. We were born here, we grew up here, we have the same history like Palestinians. Uh, even whenever I sit with Palestinians, I say, look, brothers, sisters, you are oppressed by the occupation, but we as Afro-Palestinians, we are double oppressed. First, as Palestinian, second, because of the color. Oh. فصار ممكن البني آدم يتعامل معك عندك صديق له ابن صفه بمدرسه بس في ناس يعني ما بتتقبل هذا الشيء لغاية الآن موجودين بس كيف أنت بترد عليهم بالمنية ممكن هم شوي يكون في شوية خجل ويصير تصرفهم أحسن شوي situation or uh, economic difficult situation they are forced to uh, leave the school and to go and find job uh, any job in the, uh, here or there in Israeli factories or something in order to support their family so the rate of education in the African community is not that high as the uh, Palestinian as the uh, Palestinian and uh, there are only very few you know, they can count in only uh, very few people who were able to and reach our to get, obtain a, a high degrees. <laughs> The African community used to be 
always among the avant-garde. For example, the first Palestinian he made to be put in Israeli jails came from the African Quarter. Now, me, myself, in 1968, when I was 18 years old, I was arrested, sentenced 20 years for membership in the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine of George Habash. I placed a bomb at Jaffa Street, nine Israelis were injured. 